Hey everyone, welcome. Once again, it's weekly sermon video, and this week we're doing something a little bit different. I did a little something different last week as well, even though I didn't dress up for the video, I did dress up for the personal uh, time in the service, but uh, nonetheless, Pastor Andy and I are going to sit down together and talk through John 21 and the uh, follow-up to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, Andy's going to be preaching Sunday, and next time he preaches, he's going to be doing the sermon video like, like I usually do. But uh, today we're, we're tr trying to uh, acclimate uh, one another to this whole possibility of doing things together and see where it goes. So let me pray as I start, or as we start, I should say, and uh, then we'll, uh, we'll get going with our discussion. So, Father God, I thank you for the privilege that we have of teaching your word and the fact that we have the Holy Spirit who helps us and guides us into knowing the truth, understanding the truth. And I pray that your Spirit will work in each of us today as we try to communicate things that would be helpful to those that are watching and listening. I ask too, Father, that the Holy Spirit would be working in those that are watching and listening so that the uh, ideas that are communicated will be things that are strictly uh, truthful from your word and that we would be able to uh, help people to gain and grow in their relationship to Jesus Christ. I pray that this time together will be uh, productive and that you will guard our minds and our mouths as we try to communicate and help us to be able to uh, express the things that are priority, the things that are most important. Uh, thank you for the church. Thank you for our ministry here at ACFC. I pray that you'll guide in the things we're doing. We have Awana coming to a close here in the next couple of weeks and other things preparing for summer. We just pray that you'll help us, Father, guide us in the things we're doing. I pray that this church can have an impact on our community. And again, I thank you for this time that, that we have together. <clears throat> Use this for your glory, Father. I pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. We're in John 21. And uh, what leads into this, obviously, is the resurrection of Christ. But before that, there are some pertinent or relevant things that took place that make this passage very, very important. And number one, uh, Jesus had had the upper room discourse, the upper time with the, with the disciples. And in that particular uh, situation, he... Uh, he, did, he addressed Judas, number one, he addressed Judas and said, you know, you're going to betray me. Or basically, he said to all the disciples, one of you is going to betray me. They asked each other, and Judas was the one. And, and then Jesus dismissed him and told him, go and do what you're planning to do. And Jesus also expressed to Peter during that time that Satan had wanted to sift him, had wanted to deal with him in some way to, to kind of... Uh, cause him to uh, maybe misstep or whatever else. And Peter said, well, you know, you, you say I'm going to deny you? That's never going to happen. Well, the reality is, is it did happen because then once Jesus was arrested, they went out to the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, the disciples and Jesus. Jesus left some of the disciples at the edge of the garden. He left Peter, James, and John a little bit farther in and, and asked them to pray. And then he went farther into the garden himself and he prayed, he went back and caught them sleeping. Then, you know, he woke them up and said, pray, you know, that there, there's difficulty at hand. And Jesus went, <clears throat> went back in and eventually then Judas came. And um, that's when Jesus, <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus was arrested at that point in time. And during that situation too, Peter, he, he, he kind of tried to defend Jesus. We know the story that he cut off Malchus's ear, the one of the the, the soldiers, or the servant of one of the uh, the servant of one of the uh, chief priests, and um, that all took place. But then, after he was arrested, then Peter and John both followed, and and Peter went, and as he followed Jesus, he couldn't get into the courtyard. He was able to get into the courtyard. John actually provided the means by which court, Peter got in the court, courtyard of the temple, and uh, in that whole process. There were three times, very short period of time there in, in, in this, but three times where Peter was challenged as, you were one of them. You were one of the disciples. You're from Galilee. And Jesus denied, no, or Peter denied knowing Jesus. And uh, it says in Luke, Luke 22, that when that took place, 
Actually, Peter and Jesus caught each other's eyes. And Peter went out and wept bitterly over that. And, and he cried. And, and, and uh, actually, we don't know much of what D Peter did until then after Jesus rose from the dead. And as Jesus rose from the dead, I'm sure that the disciples were, you know, they, they saw him. They heard what the, what the women had reported. We talked about that last week some. And in that whole process, uh, we think that the disciples were probably trying to figure out what's next. They were processing through all this. And we come then to John 21. And I'm going to turn this to Andy now. And he's going to explain a little bit about the background and, and what's going on with John 21. And then we're going to talk through some of the things that we can learn from this particular passage. So your turn. All right. Yeah, so when we get to John 21, um, we the, the whole scene sort of shifts. Um, so now we're outside of Jerusalem. Um, we're north. We're at the Sea of Galilee. Um, and we see a troop of disciples there. And uh, it, it's kind of, the, we go from this, this very challenging, glorious uh, rise and, and resurrection into kind of the what's next of the story. Um, and as, you, it's, as it starts off, um, we see them all, they're all sort of hanging out. So everybody who's here, so it's Simon, it's Thomas, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, so James and John, um, and a couple other disciples uh, were, were there. And it's just the whole, it starts off and, and, uh, and, and Peter says, I'm going to go fishing. And the response is, okay, let's go fishing. <laughs> and as Pastor mentioned, there's, there's sort of this feeling of, where do we go from here? Because uh, as we as we put ourselves in their shoes, you know, we, we've got uh, Jesus who's ha appeared a couple of times in Jerusalem, um, and now he's he's we, like this meeting in in uh, by the Sea of Galilee in um, is 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 planned, but we don't know exactly know what it's going to look like. Um, so they're kind of just waiting, and uh, they're kind of just going back to what they know, and, and we'll touch more on that later. Uh, as the as the story goes forward. Um, so they go out and they don't they don't catch anything um, and then as it's getting ready for daybreak So they fish in the middle of the night so they can sell at the market in the morning So when the Sun's starting to come up this guy on the side of the uh, on the side of the um, uh, The shore is like hey, do you guys catch any fish and they're like no we didn't catch any fish And he says cast off on the other side of your boat and of course boom tons of fish come in um, so uh, at that point um, Peter hops out and he swims to shore and then the boats come in and they have this breakfast um, and then Peter and uh, Jesus have this really, really uh, poignant and important discussion um, that really alludes to that night of denial. Um, and uh, it sort of ends with this another discussion uh, sort of about what happens next. And, and I don't know about you, Pastor, but wow, there is a lot going on in these passages. Um, what are your what are your thoughts on on sort of where we where we find the uh, the disciples in as this story opens up? Well, as as Pastor Andy expressed, I think that um, they were probably trying to figure out what's next. Maybe they're processing all that took place. Maybe some of them completely understood that Jesus had risen from the dead. Others are starting to wonder now how did this take place? What actually is the background to all of this? And 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 as they um, as they meet Jesus on the seashore. You know, they have breakfast together, and obviously, in fact, the passage says that none of them even asked, you know, who is this? They, 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 they recognized that it was Jesus, and, and they're eating together. And then Jesus pulls Peter aside, and they have this, as Andy called it, a poignant con conversation. In a sense, what is going on there is I think Peter was, was maybe wondering, what is in, what, what's, what's, what's next for me? Uh, you know, how am I going to continue? I was called three years ago, called to be a fisher of men. And maybe Peter thought to some extent, maybe he considered the fact that he, he'd, you know, he'd messed up to the point where he, he wasn't really capable of doing that anymore. Maybe he wondered, does, does the Lord have a, 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 a role for me? And uh, in fact, Jesus probably knew exactly what Peter was thinking. I mean, especially now Jesus was in his glorified body. He was fully aware of what's going on. And um, he, he says to Peter, he says, basically, Peter, do you love me? And, and there's, there's various aspects of, of what people think of what, what th that question was all about. Some people look at the language in the, in the original text and they say, okay, at one point, you know, Jesus says agape, and then Peter says, yes, phileo, the two different forms of love. 
some some writers think that this is uh, significant. Others say no, it's just the way John wrote. I personally think that it is significant. That's my 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 viewpoint, but that's irrelevant to us right now. But nonetheless, they go through this whole process of 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 Peter being asked, do you love me? Do you love me more than these? Do you love me enough to follow me? And that wasn't the exact question, but that's the implication. And I think the, uh, the bottom line in all this, and, and there's a lot we could, talk, we could say about that, but the bottom line is I think Jesus was making sure Peter understood that I want you to follow me. In fact, that was the last admonition they gave him. He said, follow me because you know, Peter was, was wondering about different things. In fact, Peter was distracted to the point where he even asked, you know, what, what about John? Because John was, was close by, and, and he asked these different questions as we look at that passage. I know we didn't read it right now. In fact, I encourage you, put pause button, hit the pause button, and read John 21. That's a good thing to do. So we'll just kind of go from there. But um, Pastor, know. I have a quick question for you. And what's that? Um, so when Jesus is talking with uh, Peter, and he says, and you, you had mentioned that, um, he says to him, do you love me more than these? What does the these mean? Who's he, what's, he, what's he referring to? I was always confused by that. Well, I think a lot of people are confused by that because I think some scholars believe that he's asking, do you love me more than the rest of the disciples? And I don't think he's asking that. I don't think it's a matter of comparison. But I think it's the idea that, okay, there's fish now. And Peter had been a fisherman. And was Peter thinking about throwing in the towel? Was he thinking about going back to his old life, saying, well, I, I was a fisherman before, now I can be a fisherman again? And, uh, you know, what was going on there? And maybe the question was being distracted and it was being uh, pointed to the fact that there, there were fish there. And, and you know, if we, could, if we could have seen the scene, you know, if we're watching The, 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 uh, uh, the Chosen, maybe, maybe uh, Dallas Jenkins has a viewpoint on that. But, hmm. uh, you know, I, I guess... You know, we could say maybe Jesus pointed to the fish when he said that. Maybe pointed to, you know, the other disciples. I, I, I Like I say, I don't think that's the case. But I think that there's this question mark, you know, Peter, how deep is your love for me? And that's really the, the background behind the question. It's not so much, you know, uh, what different thing you're, you're looking at. You know, is Peter's love deep enough that he's going to follow Christ? Peter had already, he he in a sense, turned his back. He said he wouldn't, but he turned his back when the slave girl and the other people in the courtyard asked him, are you one of them? So, you know, Jesus is basically getting Peter to stop and think a little bit. And as Peter answered the question, he's, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And, you know, he went through it three times, and, and there was, uh, you know, obviously something beyond uh, just what was on the, on the surface of that. Because, I mean, as, as Jesus answered or as, as Jesus gave Peter admonitions, he talked about feeding the sheep, talking about tending the sheep, and he talked about the whole idea of serving the body of Christ. And I think you've got, you know, you've got some thoughts on that too, right? Yeah, for sure. I think one of the things that stood out to me in, in that whole sort of process, um, first off, is how caring Jesus was in that, Amen. and how, how gentle that he was to Peter, um, because Peter and probably all his friends were super fragile at that moment. Um, and like you had said, they were maybe questioning what was going on. Uh, when, we, when we find, when, when the initial conversation happens in Luke, when, 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 um, when Christ finds them originally, the end of that statement is, is I'm, come with me and I'll make you fishers of men. Mm -hmm. And now we have the end of the story, and uh, they're just being fishermen. <laughs> yeah. And so I, 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 I personally, when I read this, and almost everything that Bonehead Peter does, I'm like, yeah, that's me. Like, I just, <laughs> I, I just totally relate to him so much. Um, so I thought that Christ was really, really kind here. Um, and he sort of called him to task, you know, do you love, do you love me more than these? Um, and I think that's ultimately the question for all of us is, is when we enter into that relationship, um, do we really actually love Jesus? Because I, I think at any given point, um, Peter would have said, yeah, of course, I'm, I, I love you. You're like, you're the Messiah. And, you know, the only person that could have told, told him that was the Holy Spirit, was God himself. So he, he, he couldn't learn that on his own. Peter gets it all the time. And then we have the denials. And then we have the human side. And then we have this time when I, I, I think that I can see myself so much in that situation where um, when the rubber hits the road, do I really believe that? You know, um, and I think it's easy to say th something like, yes, of course, Jesus, I love you. Um, but in the back of, like, I feel like Jesus, the, the Peter would have been like, yeah, of course I love you, but I denied you. 
So do I actually love you? And of course, Christ already knows his heart. Like Christ knows that this whole conversation forms out because Jesus already knows that he does actually love him. And I think what's so sweet about this and how caring is, is, is Jesus is, is fixing the legality in a way of, of the infraction. So like for every one denial, there's, there's the, the one redemption. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that sort of closes that out from a legal standpoint. But I don't know about you guys, but like I've been in situations where I've done some, something as a discipline, like forgive someone or, or enter into a relationship with more grace. And I don't want to. Like, I just don't want to. Like, I don't feel it. Um, but I do it because I know it, it's mm. kind of the fake it till you make it kind of a mentality. Um, because I think part of that sanctification process, once we give ourselves to Christ and we begin walking that out on the day to day, we're going to have a lot of failures, but we're going to have a lot of victories as well. But they're going to be small, little daily victories. Like, you know, say that nice thing or don't respond in anger or just pray for that person. And those kind of moments where it builds the the, the character of Christ in you. Um, and I, I, I kind of feel like that's what Jesus is doing at this point where he's like, Peter, do you love me? Yeah, duh, of course I love you. Remember what he said? He says, you know I love you. He doesn't say, yes, I love you. He says, you know I love you. Amen. Which I think is fascinating because um, he could say, like, prove it. He's like, well, I did all these things for you. Like, you know, hey, I cut off that dude's ear. Like, that clearly says that I love you. But he, Jesus knows that Peter knows that he loves him. But he still, he keeps hitting him and he keeps bringing this down because I think what he's trying to almost do is to deal with Peter's shame. And Peter feels so terrible about what he did. He's like, yeah, I love you, but I'm not lovable. Like, and I've, I've been there. I felt like, like, like I know intellectually Christ's love for me, but because of the stupid things that I've done, I'm like, well, yeah, but you can't actually forgive me. But do you love me? Yeah, I know, but that was a really, really bad, stupid situation. And you know, I love you, but do you love me? Yes, I love you. Like he, he just breaks it down. And I think I love this part here. Um, when it says, um, oh, sorry, wrong part. When he, the third time when he says it to Peter, he says, um, he says, okay, so Simon, son of John, do you love me? And it says, Peter was grieved when he said it a third time. And I'm just like, oh, you know, like I've got kids, you know, and, and it's like, I have to tell them multiple times to do things. And sometimes it's not till like, I get to that last one where I'm like, oh, now you understand it. Like now we've made that connection. And I, I feel like that that's what's happening here is, is part of like the significance of like, how do we follow Christ is um, we have to be born again. Like we have to be renewed in ourselves and only he can do that. Only his love can do that. Um, and I just, I just love that. I see that going through this passage. Mm-hmm. Well, I think one of the other significant things that we can see is, is the time frame of all this. This is before Pentecost. Right. So the disciples had not been mm-hmm. indwelled by the Holy Spirit just yet. Good point. And, uh, you know, so Jesus, as he's asking Peter these questions, he's not asking these questions because Jesus wanted to know. He's asking these questions for the sake of Peter and very possibly for the sake of the other disciples as they watched. Because mm-hmm. who was going to be the spokesman for them as as things started to develop with regard to the start of the church? Wow. Peter's the first one that preached. He, he preached on the day of Pentecost. And, and when he received the Holy Spirit, the, the change in Peter was very significant now, we see a sanctification process in Peter's life throughout, you know, in the book of Acts, there were times when Peter was, uh, you know, he went back to his old ways to some extent. He, he would, uh, he, he got into very impulsive situations and whatnot, but nonetheless, um, God was at work in Peter's life changing him. And, and Jesus didn't ask Peter these questions for, for, for Jesus's question. He was asking these for the pers- for the sake of Peter to be able to say yes, you know, he, he was restored, and he was restored to a position of ministry because, you know, he. In fact, I think you're in your message. You're going to talk about the shepherding aspects, and and I mean the, uh, you know, the reality is 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 Peter wrote in First Peter five. He says, you know, shepherd the flock of God. He's talking to the to the elders of the church. Shepherd the flock of God. Why could he say that? Because he himself was told by Jesus, shepherd. And he had that, that, that whole perspective. So that's important. And, and I, I think that there, there, there are other things here that as we, as we look at this passage of Scripture, you know, there's so much. In fact, it's packed. It, it, it's almost worth two or three messages to some extent. And, and I mean, because, you know, we, we see, you know, one thing that is pointed out at the very beginning, 
something we didn't say at the, at the start here when we talked about the, the, the fishing es, es, escapades of the disciples. When Jesus met the disciples, Peter, James, uh, John, and Andrew, when he met them, you know, they'd had an unsuccessful night fishing. They'd caught nothing. And, and actually, Jesus borrowed the boat to be a, a, a platform to be able to teach people. And then after he got done, he says, now cast the boat, you know, go out further into the deep water and, and cast out the nets. And Peter says, well, we fished all night. We didn't catch anything. But if you say do this, we'll do it. And, and, and they did, and they, they, they caught so many fish that it broke the nets. So in the, in the, in the uh, gospel accounts of Jesus with the disciples, every time the disciples went fishing, they didn't catch anything until Jesus helped them. And, and, and there's a certain aspect in this, in this passage, I think, where we, we're, we're reminded of our inadequacy without the Lord. I mean, Jesus said, you know, in, in John 15, in the upper room, he says, without me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And, and we need to understand our inadequacies. And if we're going to follow Christ, we don't follow him in our own strength. We follow him in the strength of what he provides for us, the Holy Spirit and, and, spiritual, and scriptural guidance and all that. So that's important. And our adequacy is always in Christ. And, and then I think, too, you know, as, as we, as you mentioned, too, a little bit ago, those moments when we, when we question ourselves, we question, well, I, I've done this. I did it wrong. You know, am I, do I need to be disciplined? Am, am, I, am I losing my, my responsibility, losing my role and, and all that? And, and, and the Lord you know, he, he re restored Peter. He gave Peter the opportunity to say, okay, Jesus sent me to do this. I mean, he was literally an apostle then. I mean, he would have been, he was already an apostle because he'd been sent by Jesus previous to that. But he, he officially got the title of apostle again because Jesus sent him out to be a shepherd and to shepherd the flock. And, uh, you know, he, you know, in fact, the uh, whole idea here, Jesus restored Peter, and Peter received a sense of forgiveness that he probably didn't have before that. And, you know, when we feel as if we failed, we feel as if we've done something wrong, that whole concept of being forgiven is really, it's life-changing. And, and I think that had a life-changing impact on Peter's life. And then the other thing I think it's important for, for, for in this passage you know, when, when Jesus gave Peter those instructions and, 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 and took the time with him, what did Peter do? Peter got distracted. He got distracted by John. He says, what about John? What about John's life? I know you're going to talk more about that in your message too, but I think that the thing we need to understand is that it's important. We, always, we keep our eyes on Jesus. You know, as it says in Hebrews 12, fo focusing our eyes, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And, and when we begin to be distracted by the world, or distracted by different things that happen around us, and we lose sight of the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is, is our adequacy, he's our, uh, he's our atonement, I mean, he's everything that we need, you know, that is such an important aspect. So, uh, you know, any thoughts you have as we try to close off? Yeah, I, I really like everything you said. Um, I, I think one of the things that we miss a lot as a church is just that, like, folks, like, this book is amazing. Like, it, it's 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 a little cheesy. Some people say it's an instruction manual for life, but the reality is, is 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 there's a way for us to to operate together, both individually and then together as a community, mm. um, that Amen. will be stronger and greater and and just so much more satisfying. And yes, it's going to be hard. I mean, the end of his conversation with Peter, he says he basically says, "Hey, also now that you've said that you love me and you're going to follow me, you're going to die on a cross too." You know, so this element of, of suffering and but but folks, remember, we're not in this because we, we picked the easy path. We 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 wanted we, we chose this because it's the right path. And because it's the right path, God says, hey, take my yoke. It's light. Um, so I feel like if we're doing what we, we need to do and and we're operating um, in, in a place that's that's powerful and, and, and understanding um, and we're surrounded by people, other believers who are willing to tell us challenging things and we're willing to listen to them, hmm. you know, that we can have humility and forgiveness um, and really bear that redemption out on a day to day. So um, I just think that, uh, yeah, I just I think this is an amazing passage um, and that we definitely can all learn a lot from it. Yeah. There's a whole, a whole lot more in there than we've probably expressed right now or in, in this during this time. But, uh, hey, read it for yourself. Study it and uh, trust that uh, your observation of this passage and noting the different things that, that uh, John writes for us there. Remember, John wrote that we might understand clearly that Christ is the Messiah. 
He is the Savior. He is the, the way, the truth, and the life, and we can't get to the Father but through Him. So number one, if you've never trusted in Jesus Christ, please realize that it's merely admitting the fact, I'm a sinner. I realize Christ died for my sins. He arose from the dead to prove that His, his sacrifice was sufficient and that we trust in Him and we rely on Him. We're not going to sit at heaven's gate before we, after we pass away or, or, or after this life is done, sit at heaven's gate and say, well, I did this and I did this and I did that. No, it's going to be, the Lord did this for me. He paid the price for me. So we realize he's the way, the truth, and life. And beyond that, we have this message that we need to pre present to others. And that's what Jesus was sending Peter to do. You know, tend the sheep, tend the flock, uh, feed and, 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 and teach and, and all those different things. So uh, we realize that we have the responsibility because of what this passage says. So why don't you close this off in prayer? Well, uh, Father, I thank you so much for the ways in which you care for us. Um, mm. I thank you for the ways in which um, you you really insert yourself into our lives. Um, Amen. I ask that you would help us to do that better. Help us to, to open ourselves up in humility to be able to say, Lord, we do love you, but we need you. And, and um, your purposes are strong and they are holy and great. And, and being able to give you that authority, Lord, to trust you as that, that wise king, but also that loving father. Um, so we thank you for that process, Lord. Um, I ask that you would be with this church and you'd be with our friends as they listen. Um, Lord, that you would convict their hearts to just find a, a deeper place, to have a deeper connection, to, mm -hmm. to make those intentional steps that they can do to, to really come close to you, Lord. It, your grace is sufficient. It's nothing that we can do, Lord, but you love it when we come close. You love it when we choose you. You love it when we open up our Bible and we read and, and we have fellowship with other believers. Um, so, Lord, I would just ask that uh, that grace would continue, that we would have so many opportunities to connect with you and grow in your spirit um, mm. and that you would just uh, help us to understand what that light yoke means, Lord. Um, and we're just so thankful. We're thankful to be a part of your kingdom. We're, we're thankful to be able to understand and share this gospel um, so that other people um, can can have this life of freedom that we have. So we thank you. Um, we, we just say yes to all of your ways. And we, uh, we do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, thank you for tuning in and watching. We, we're, we're appreciative of that. And, um, in fact, I, I encourage you, I'd love to hear feedback on the idea of us doing this together, because, I mean, we may do this more often. Uh, I, um, as I say every week, it's a privilege, and, and it, it's something that's, that's very, very, uh, it's a precious privilege that we have to be able to teach and communicate God's Word and, and, and reach out through the media. That, that, that's good. But, um, and we want to be both accurate and truthful with God's word, but we also like to be creative. We like to do things that will be interesting and we'll, we'll, we'll keep people engaged. So, you know, if, if you want to give feedback on this, I, I'd appreciate that. And, 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 uh, and thank you for that. And again, uh, appreciate your prayers. And uh, we, we, for those of you that we know are watching, we pray for you. And uh, tune in next week. Next week, we'll be looking at, at Acts chapter 3, where Peter and John went to the temple to pray. But actually, they, let a man, uh, they met a lay man on the way, and he stuck out his palm and asked for an alm. And this is what Peter did say. Well, we'll that, that, that's next week, all right? Lord bless, and we'll uh, hopefully, hopefully hear from you all.